Hello, good people. Welcome to ACCA Management Accounting. Today, we want to look at an exam paper. Uh, we are using the BPP revision kit. So, we are using uh, that revision kit. Uh, we are doing mock number two exam. We are doing mock two number. We are doing mock number two. Mock number two. So, we are going to do mock choice. So, guys, uh, we are going to push boundaries. Just fasten your seatbelts. We are about to fly. So I'm going to start with number one, number one. So guys, I hope you are all ready because um, we want to have this question quickly. Right, number one, uh, I will read what we are required to do first. What are they saying? They're saying, what was its cost per kg three years ago? Let's read. Three years ago, the price index, I'm seeing the index on the question. Appropriate to material Z, yet a value of 140. It's, it now has a value of 180, those are the index. And they are saying the material cost uh, is 3,500 per kg today. So guys, this is what you have to understand when you are given the index. If the index increase, it means the price will also what increase. Looking at this, they are saying three years ago, they are talking about three years back. So this is number one. So guys, three years ago, what was your index? Your index was 140. What about the price? I'm not giving the price. Right. Then they are saying now the index is now 180, right? It's now 180. What about the price? The price uh, they have said the material cost is 3,500 per kg today. Do not assume in the exam. Read the question carefully. The 3,000, they didn't say it's for three years ago. They say it's now. So that's why it's, uh, this is now the current price of the material Z. So they are now saying what is the cost of the material three years back. You understand? Remember what I said. If the index increase, it means the price will also increase. So the, from three years ago to now, the index has increased, meaning the price has increased. Meaning that on the answers, the value VAT has to be less than 3.5. If you look at your answer, so this is what I'm going to do. The first one I will say is A, the second answer, that will be B, the third one that will be C, the last one that will be D. So looking at the answers, uh, we will be left with A and B because uh, we need an amount that is less than what? 3.5. So for you to get an amount that is less than 3.5, Use your edit machine, use your calculator. This will be my numerator, this will be my denominator, and you get the 3.5. Because three years ago, the index was low, meaning the price was it should also be lower than 3.5. So 140 over this, multiply by 3.5, I'm getting 27.22, which is B. Right, move on to number two. Looking at number two, what am I seeing? This is now um, the sources of data, guys. On the source of data, they are talking about the sampling metals, the quarter sampling, and the, and the stratified. They are saying which of the following is true. Let's read. Quarter sampling, yes, is a non-probability sampling method. That's correct. The word quarter there represents the limit. So, guys, when you talk about the quarter, it doesn't end with ER, but it represents the limit. This is when we say the investigators are told to interview all the people they meet up to a certain quarter. So, guys, uh, on sampling methods, guys, this is what, what I want you to understand. There is what is known as the population data. There is what is known as the sample data. So, in business, now, if you have a business, you don't do population data, you obtain a sample data. Because, for example, let's say you, you, you want to manufacture a new, a new soft drink, right? And you want to introduce it to the market. So, guys, when you manufacture it, I'm going to ask everyone how it's tested. You can't ask everyone. So, when you do your research, it's not possible to get the information from everyone who is in the country, right? So, the, what you can do is you can do a sample. Just you select a few number of people, then you get the information that you want. So that's what we are talking about. So there are certain methods that you can use. So we are saying number one, there is what is known as the quarter sampling. So when quarter sampling is used, we are saying they are, let's say if they say we are going to investigate like uh, 20 men and 10 women. So you'll be given a specific number. So you are limited. So if you are, if you are told to interview 30 people, so you can't ask 40. 
So you have be limited. So the word limit represents quarter. That quarter is specific. It's non probability. So the first statement is correct. The second statement they are saying now stratified random uh, involves dividing the population into categories. So the word stratified was derived from the word strata, the word strata which represents groups or categories. So statement number two is talking about the categories is also correct. So both statements are true which makes C to be the correct answer. Moving on to number three now, what am I seeing? They are saying which two cost types would be classified as a semi-variable cost. So now when you talk about the other costs that are semi-variable, other costs Costs that are fixed, the other costs that are step, other costs that are variable. There is no cost behavior that we are talking about. Now, on the cost behavior, guys, I want you to understand that. How do you know your cost? We say total cost is equal to fixed cost plus the variable cost. There are costs that are fixed, there are costs that are variable. What are fixed costs? We don't have the proper definition from the books. Yes, yes, yes. Why, why do you say so? Because it starts with the way saying these are the costs that do not. Yes, I've seen that. These are the costs that do not vary with the activity level in total. So in other words, they are saying the fixed costs, these are costs that are fixed because they are fixed. Right, the variable costs, they do vary, they do change with the level of activity in total. So this is the graph that, that I want you to understand, guys. So when you have the fixed costs in total, it will be constant like this. This is the total. Uh, this is the total fixed cost. Now this is the total variable cost. It starts from zero here. Let me explain uh, so that you'll be able to understand and we apply, we look at the question. Now on this one, guys, the fixed cost, let's say it's 500 here. If you pay rent, the fixed, the, the cost will be fixed. It doesn't change with the level of what? With the level of activity, you understand? Let me give an example here. It doesn't matter you manufacture 100, doesn't matter Meta you manufacture 200 or 500, you still get the cost that is uh, uh, fixed, which is 500. But guys, what about if someone wants to understand the fixed cost per unit? Now, these are the questions that are tricked in the exam. Let's look at the fixed cost per unit. Let's look at this. How about if you manufacture 500, your salary, if you manufacture 100 units, your salary will still be what? 500. If you divide per unit, it will be what? Five dollars per unit. How about if you manufacture two hundred? You look at your cost. Uh, the cost will be what two point five per watt per unit. How about if you manufacture five hundred units? You still get five hundred. So per unit is what dollar per unit. Are you seeing what is happening to the fixed cost per unit? They are what decreasing. So in other words, they say fixed cost per unit it what decrease. You get it. Now let's look at the variable cost. Let's talk about, let's say this is the variable marker. If I buy one, maybe the cost, let's say it's two dollars for admin circle. What about if I buy two? So two will cost me four dollars. What about if I buy three? Three will cost me six dollars. You are seeing this. So if I buy one, I will incur how much? So let's now uh, look at the variable cost per unit. Right, the variable cost per unit here. Yeah. The variable cost per unit. If I buy one, the cost will be two dollars. So per unit is what? Is two dollars per unit. If I buy two, the cost will be four. So four dollars is for two markers. So per unit is how much? Two dollars per unit. If I buy three, the cost will be six. Six over three is two dollars. So guys, the variable cost per unit is what? Is constant. Are you seeing this? So this is what you have to understand when we look at per unit. You get it. Now, this this is the graph for fixed cost. This is the graph for the variable cost. Let's read the question. Number three, a manufacturing company has four types of cost. T1 up to T4. The total cost of each type uh, are at two different production level is. So we are given the cost type T1 to T4. We have uh, the number of units and the, the number of units which is 125, which is 180 there. So now I want you to understand this. For T1 up to T4. T1, T2, T3, T4. So guys, if the cost is constant, per unit, it means it's a variable cost. But now semi-variable cost is a combination of two costs, 
because semi is, means the other part is semi variable, the other part is variable, meaning the other part uh, is fixed. So it's a combination of the fixed and the variable cost. So the one is semi variable cost. So, but if I get a constant uh, answer, it means the graph it will be variable cost, not the semi variable. Like for example, on T1, if you divide how about for 125 units, how about for 180 units a year, you get it. So if I say 1000 divided by 125, I'm getting eight dollars for T1. What about if I say 1260 divided by 180, I'm getting seven dollars. You get it. So is it constant? If you look at this, is the cost constant? It is not constant, guys. Therefore, it is a fixed a variable part. So therefore, it's semi-variable. So this one is semi-variable. Now, we do the same uh, for, for T2, 1750 divided by 125, I'm getting 40. Uh, what about uh, the cost 25, 20, if you divide with 180, I'm getting 14. Now, the cost is constant per unit, meaning it's a variable cost, but they didn't ask for the variable. They asked for the same variable. 2475 divided by 125, I'm getting 19.8. Then what about uh, 2826 uh, divided by 180, then I'm getting 15.7. The cost is semi variable because it's not the same. The one, this one. Right. What about 3225 divided by 125? Uh, divided by 125, you get 25.8. If you divide that one, you get 25.8. The cost is constant, meaning it's variable. They didn't ask for the variable. So the answer is T1 and T3. Move on to number four. Yes, let's look at number four graph. D companies presented information on a particular cost. Look at this. The one statement which is correct. Which two of the following on number four are correct? So now uh, let's read statement one at, at, at a level which two? They just want two. So let's see the first one. At a level of 30 units, um, the total cost is 300 and what? And 50 is 350. Is 350. So if you look at the graph, guys, you, you go to 30 units, you draw a broken line upwards. When you touch that line, you draw another broken line. So when you look at that, I'm seeing 30 units there, I'm seeing 350 there. That's correct. Now on segment number two, fix the cost. Uh, is what 200 guys when you have your semi variable cost it will be like this and this this is this part is the fixed cost this part changes is the variable cost so if you look at this on this one they said it's 200 in semi number two they are saying the fixed cost is 200 so one and two are the correct answers let's look go to number five number five i'm seeing the information there that's performance measurement i'm seeing the information for the value value for money people always say value for money yes value for money we do have three things we have economy efficiency and effectiveness don't forget when they say externality to ecology that's rubbish right so now we have economy what about economy what are we saying economy lies on operating at minimal cost then the efficiency now People just say this is the relationship of inputs and output, not just the any relationship. We are talking about the utilization of the minimum resource input to achieve the required output. That's efficiency now. When you are able to save time, when you are save, when you are able to save money, then we say you were more efficient. You get it. Then on the effectiveness now, is it, is you being able to achieve the business objectives? Were you able to achieve your goals? Were you able to achieve your results? Were you able to achieve your targets? I can give an example now on the effectiveness. We can talk about uh, a college, and when you talk about the pass rate, students have been passing. So guys, we have achieved our goal. So that's effectiveness. We were effective. You understand? We can talk about the hospital. Hospital, guys, the aim is to treat the patient successfully. So if we say a patient was treated successfully, it means we have, uh, we have uh, achieved our objectives. So that's effectiveness. Let me read number five. Do you want me to give you an answer? I don't think so. Because if you read a question like this, the performance of the public funded hospital is monitored using measures based upon the three E's. The most important performance measure is considered to be the achievement. Achievement of what? Hospital targets for the successful treatment of what? Of patients. Patients have been treated successfully, therefore we were effective. So that's effectiveness, you get it. But if they have said, 
the cost of a successfully treated patient that was going to be efficient. You understand? But they just say we treated patients successfully, therefore it's effectiveness. C is the correct answer. Right, number six, uh, uh, the following statement is true or false. Now, this is not on life cycle costing. Most people, they don't study the life cycle costing when they, when they are doing MA. Yes, these topics are mainly explained, explained in performance management. But they do come into the exam, you need to know them. The life cycle costing is under alternative costing principles. So on the life cycle costing, guys, what are we saying? We say there are so many stages. The, we, we, the first one is the research and development stage. And the company can make losses and where we say you research about something. So you acquire the knowledge, you research, you take cost. You develop your product, you take cost. This is where most costs are incurred, significant costs are incurred. So from the research and development stage, on the life cycle costing, you move on to the introduction stage. The introduction stage, this is when you introduce the product into the market. But normally, the sales will be very low. From the introduction stage, you move on to the growth stage. Where we say now, you have reached the growth stage, you can also even charge high selling prices. This is the initial stage to make profits now. And from the growth stage, you move on to the maturity. Maturity, we have high sales volume, where you enjoy the economies of scale. You understand? You have high sales volume. But from the maturity stage, yes, it do happen that a product can reach a decline stage. It happens, guys, I'll give you examples. Think of Nokia, you understand? Think of so many companies that uh, reached the decline stage. But just know that, yes, a product can take time. We can talk about the company, we can talk about the product. We, it can take time to reach the decline stage. But just know that a decline stage is inevitable. In other words, I'm saying it is unavoidable. So those are the stages, guys. Some they will want to understand the graph. But I've explained it to you about the life cycle costing. So just think of this, just think of this graph, guys. Just think of this graph where we say we have this. We are not selling here. This is the intro. This is uh, the growth. This is the maturity. This is the what? The decline. Are you seeing this? We, we are not say selling here. You have losses here, losses here. You understand? One, one on the research and development cost. Research and development cost, we are looking at the sales. The reason why I didn't uh, draw a graph here because on the research and development, you are not what? On the research and development, you are not selling goods. Introduction is introduced, growth, maturity, decline stage. So that's the graph, guys, now. So this is a good method. Uh, if they ask you in the exam about the cost, uh, the cost that are included under life cycle costing, just tell them all of the above. All costs are included under life cycle costing. It, it considers all the costs. Uh, so many costs. I can talk about the design costs. I can talk about the inventory costs. I can talk about the production costs. I can talk about the inventory costs, marketing costs. We include all costs, etc. Guys. So on life cycle costing, this is a good method since it considers all costs. So it helps you to assess the overall profitability of the what of the product. Let's read. Note number one: life cycle costing assesses a product uh, profitability of its entire life. That's true. Yes. Note number two: the aim of the life cycle costing is to understand the product profitability more fully. That's true. All statements are true, meaning C is the correct answer. Yes, pushing boundaries normalized in the abnormal number seven. Which of the following tasks would usually be carried out first in the budgetary planning process? Guys, so <clears throat> I'm sure we are left with two months, right? For us to be in the year 2023. So what do people do normally when we start the year? People will, will make goals. People will, will be planning. You understand? So they will be saying, now we are in, the, we are in January 2023. So I do have goals this year. I want to achieve this. So they will be setting goals at the first stage. So guys, what occurs at the planning stage? You plan when on the planning stage, this is where you set your goals. You set your objectives or your targets. So on the answers, D is the answer. Establishing what? Organizations long term what objectives right then number eight guys number eight what's this I'm seeing the strategic um we've seen the senior tactical what operational so do you know this hierarchy where we talk about the top management where we talk about the middle management and the lower management you understand the top management they are the what they are the seniors they do a, a strategic plan a long term plan they they don't plan uh, every day guys they long they long they make long term plans for example I want to invest in a project that is going to last 
for five years. Such decisions are made by the seniors. This is, this is a strategic plan, you get it. But the middle management, we can talk about the managers, the HR manager, sales manager, production manager. They do what is known as the tactical what plan. For example, plan that is going to last for 12 months, maybe this is a three months plan, six months plan. We are preparing the variance reports. So those are, is done by the tactical uh, managers. It's a tactical plan, mid to management. Lower management, now we, we talk about the supervisor, they plan every day. Their plan is what? Operational. They, they do what is known as the day-to-day -day plan. So let's read note number one, strategic information is mainly used by seniors. Strategic by seniors, those are the two management, that's correct. Note number two, productivity measurements are examples of title. That's correct, productivity measurements. Who can do that? It is the tactical managers, the need to manage it, right? Then number three, operational information, remember I said day-to-day, -day, is required frequently, yes, it's frequent. So that's correct. So all of the segments they are correct. Yes, number nine there. Oh, sh uh, number nine. Oh, this one I think uh, we need a uh, good take time on this one. All right, number nine. Uh, but I'll try to be faster. Number nine. We do have different cost centers. We've got center X. We've got center Y. Let's read the question. What is the value fixed overhead per unit for product P two? Looking at this information, which topic is this? This is the accounting for overheads. So how do you solve this kind of question when you are given different departments? So this is what you do. I'm seeing department X and seeing Y. So guys, the first thing you have to calculate what is known as the OAR, where we say budgeted fixed overheads divided by the budgeted activity level, right? But it's budgeted activity level, but let's be specific. Let's read. What is affecting the cost? They are saying fixed overhead costs, the last statement, they are saying the fixed overhead costs are absorbed. It means they are being affected by what? By what? By direct labor hour basis. So this is the budgeted uh, labor hours. That is uh, what is affecting the cost. Yes, the labor will affect the overhead cost, right? So now uh, the cost here is 88,000. For, for why this is what? 96,000 you divide with the total hours. So under product X, under sorry, under department, these are the cost centers. On this department, we are going to, if, if, if you check the column, we are going to manufacture P1 and P2. You get it. So for P1, we need how many hours per unit? For P1, we need three hours per unit. But how many units do you want to manufacture for P1? They have said budgeted output is, but the word budget guys means expected. So meaning the expected output is 8,000 units of each product. So you multiply by 8,000 units, you close, plus for P2, how many hours are going to take per unit? 2.5 per unit times the number of units that you are going to manufacture, 8,000. You can do the same for why you don't need to explain one year, one hour per unit times the number of units. 8,000 is still 8,000. They, yes, they said for each product. What about for Y is the same? Two hours multiplied by 8,000. Right. Step by step, guys, 88,000, 96. So I'm just working both departments at once, killing two beds with one stone. Three by 8,000. I'm getting 24. 24,000. So this will be 24,000. Plus, I don't want, I, I don't prefer shortcuts, guys. So, I know someone would say, it, uh, what if you just add the other, then you multiply by 1,000? Yes, you can, you can be right. But not one person who will say 8,000 units each. They can say X, we need 8,000. Y, we need 4,000. So, this is the correct formula, guys. Right. Let's move on. 8,000 here plus, this will be 16,000, right? 88,000 divided by... 44,000. Please, I do recommend that you always use the calculator. Don't use your head. Um, divide. Don't use your exhibitors. So this is the two, two dollars per hour. Right, uh, 96 or um, 8 plus 16, that's uh, 24. 96 over 24. That's four dollars per hour. So now we are saying under this department X, 
if we manufacture uh, our products for the work, for the hour, we will incur two dollars. But otherwise, if they manufacture per hour, they will incur four dollars. Now the question is saying, what is the budget fixed overhead cost per unit for product P2? Like, what about if we want to manufacture product P2? What is the cost that we are going to incur? Just know that if you want to manufacture P2, you go to P2. P2 will pass through department X and also Y. So for P2 under X, how many hours do you need? You need 2.5 hours. But just know that as long as it passes through this department, we will incur $2 per watt per hour. And our P2 needs how many hours? 2.5 hours. Plus, it is going to pass through Y. Under Y, yes, we have seen that per hour under Y, they incur $4 per hour. But how many hours are we going to take for P2 in department Y? Two hours. This is it. So you multiply 2 by 2.5, 2 by 2.5. This is $5 plus. Uh, obviously, this is 8. 5 plus 8. I don't want to make a mistake. 18. So this is 2.5, 2 by 2.5, to just, just to verify, I'm getting 5. 4 by 2, I'm getting 8. Then your correct answer, that will be 18. You get it? So that's it, number 9, number 10. Right, number 10 there. So this is the answer, guys. Your answer is D. Your answer is D. So, so we now need number 10. Number 10. <clears throat> number 10, um, under or over absorption. Under or over absorption, this is still under accounting for overheads. Let me give this, this example. I'm expecting to pay two dollars for this whiteboard marker. Then actually, I have paid dollar fifty instead of two dollars. So what I was expecting, my expectation was higher than the amount that I actually paid. Meaning the expectation it was higher. It was over by fifty cents. That's an overabsorption. If what you are estimating is higher, it's over absorption. If what you are estimating is lower, it's under absorption. Right, this question, they want you to calculate number 10 over under absorption. Let me do it quickly. This is the formula, guys, actual fixed overheads. So the total, this is the formula that I use. All formulas are, the, are correct. Total actual fixed overheads. We are focusing on the fixed cost. What is the actual fixed cost? Let's, let's read the question. Uh, the actual overhead cost that I'm seeing is about 28480 a day. Right. Then I'll compare with the total overhead absorbed. So guys, you don't compare with the cost that is given, the, the, the 13500 there. You don't compare with it. Because guys, 13500 is based on what? This is a budget, what you're expecting is based on 9000 machine hours. But actually we have incurred this cost and how many units have you worked? We have worked for 8,800. So guys, the cost of 13,500, you can't compare it with this to get the over under. Because this one is based on, this one is based on 8,800 hours. You get it? But our budget, our budget of, of how much? Of 13,500 is based on what? is based on 9,000 hours, you get it? So what you do is, you adjust this cost, since we were expecting to incur this if we work this hour, these hours, how about if we work these hours, the actual? The cost was supposed to be, if we were, if, if we worked 8,800, our budget, you have to flex it to adjust it to remove it from 9,000 to this 8,800. 
you get it. So the formula, that's why we say OAR uh, per hour times actual hours. If it's units, you are given units, use units. Right, so I'll adjust the OAR, the budget cost, budget cost. This is $14.50 per hour. Multiplied by the actual hours actually went. I'm flexing the budget. This is it. 14.5 times 8.8, you get 127,600. When you compare the two, you get 888 there. Now, is it over or is under? Total absorbed, this is what expected. So guys, what we are expecting is it higher than what actually occurred. The expected cost was this, but actually we incurred more. So the amount that I was expecting is lower, it's an underabsorption. Right. But as to some who won't understand this, this is what I'll say. You put a star. If it's if it's if you are going to add, it's over. If you are going to less, it's what? It's under. So guys, this is the total. This, I'm going to say this plus this to get 127. Or you are going to say less. For us to get 127, do we add the two or we less? Mm, we less, we get. We less for you, to, for you to get this, we less. So this is what? Under. It's an under absorption of 880. All right, few questions left. Number 11, which two of the following are disadvantaged? They didn't answer the question very well. Or flexible budget. Guys, like, you can flex the budget, you can adjust the budget. A flexible budget is different from a fixed. So if you flex, let's wait. They are not useful for decision making. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not true. You understand? The flexible budget, guys, they are useful. They are more time consuming. Yes, this is a disadvantage. So B is the correct one. It's a disadvantage. Because when you adjust the budget, you flex this time. And also, um, they are saying what? They are based on a set of assumptions which may be over simplistic. Because when you flex the budget, you also be using some assumptions. So B and D is the correct answer. Number two of them, this is job costing, but before I do that, let's let's look at number 13, the theories first. Which two of the following advantages of participative approach are to budgeting? When you budget, guys, participative, this is when you involve the lower level managers to also make the decisions. So guys, if you involve them, guys, they are not, they'll be motivated. They will feel that they are important in the organization. So motivation is correct. Improved motivation is an advantage, which you see. And also uh, improved acceptance of the budget. They will accept the budget. Rather than to just impose the budget, rather than to just give them to say, achieve this, achieve this. But they will also accept the budget because they are also involved in making decisions. Like, right, number two of them, I want to calculate this one, the job costing. Right, now let's go the job costing. Job costing, guys, um, this is uh, costing. So we need to know the total costs for the, for the job. I'll say DMDL, direct material, direct labor, and the direct what expense. DMDL, DE, will give you a what? Will give you a prime cost. Are you given the direct material? Look at your question. Uh, job uh, number six or five. So total cost for the job six what zero five. This is just a number. So this is the, the number, the job number. So on our cost, what is our direct material? You have been given, given the three hundred. What about the direct labor? You have been given four hundred. What about the direct expense? Not given. So the prime cost, the total prime cost means what, guys? People don't understand. It means the total direct cost. We have 700 here, right? But guys, even though if I use the prime cost, let's look at this. Uh, they are saying what direct labor is paid at eight dollars per hour. There's a reason why they'll give you that cost, even though you, you have the actual cost for the labor. But why did they say that we we we, we were paying them eight dollars per hour? You were being told that in order to know the number of hours. So guys, uh, how many hours have been worked by the employees? This is very important. Why am I calculating the number of hours? Because, guys, the production overheads. If you even relate to the previous question, the, 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 the overheads can be affected by labor. So if the overheads are affected by the labor, for you to be able to know the total cost of the overheads, you must know how many hours did the employees took. So how many hours did they took for the job? So 400 divided by 
the rate per hour. So 50, it means they will be 50 hours. You get it. Now let's read the, on the production. Production of eggs are absorbed at a rate of what? $26 watt per, per, per production of eggs. $26 per hour. Per labor hour. So in other words, they're saying if employees work one hour, these overheads are going to be $26. So for you to know the total cost, you ask the question, how many hours did they work? They worked for? They worked 50 hours for this job. So you multiply by 50 hours. You get it. So this will be 26 by 50. This will be 1.3. And the last one on this are the non-production overheads. Non-production overheads. That will be how much? Look at this. They said this one 20% of what? Of prime costs. You see the reason of doing it properly? Because they can say one like this. They said 120 of prime cost. My prime cost is 700. So 120 over 100 by the 700 prime cost, I'm getting 840 here. Right. So this is 700. 1.3 plus 840. I'm getting 24, 2840. Looking at the answers, I'm seeing C is the correct answer. Easy stuff.